Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the IA Cast. All right, we're back for another episode. This is kind of a, a pre episode to what's coming, and uh, uh, that's uh, Apple Christmas, also known as WWDC, Worldwide Developers Conference. So I have a good group of folks with me to talk about our predictions this time. So uh, back on the show, we have Michael Babcock. Hello, Michael. Hey, Michael. Thanks for having me. And for visual people on YouTube, there's a dog behind my right shoulder, and you'll see some VOIP phones behind me, and my headphones are on. Ah, yes. I I don't know that I see the dog, but... Uh... <laughs> I, I, I tell people that because he will come in and out of uh, of view, and I've just gotten used to that with AMI. It's, uh, well, there's going to be a, a dog, and he's going to come in and say hi, <laughs> or he won't. And and that voice you heard was Angie Fisher. Hello, good to be here. Mm-hmm. We also have Lynn Snyder with us. Hi, Lynn. Hey there, everybody. And we have Taylor Arndt back with us. Hey, everyone. Yes. So we have a great show lined up for you guys today, and we we are going to talk about some news, but very little, because we're going to just give you guys so much news on Monday. This show will come out tomorrow after recording, and that's going to be Sunday the 4th, and then we will have a show on the 5th, and that will be coming out either on Monday or Tuesday. So we're going to be busy. Well, I'll be busy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but today's news to start out with, uh, very interesting stuff. So Reddit may be pulling a Twitter. That, that seems like it should be a weird pun or joke or something nowadays. (laughs) But it's truth. Yes. It's so true these days. It's like ridiculously authentic. The, basically what's happening is. The creator of Apollo had a call with Reddit, um, and Apollo is an app. I got a notification from Mona, and their sounds are very loud through headphones. Oh, wow. oh my lord, that was like <laughs> boom! <laughs> was like, yeah, I haven't enabled my sounds Wait a minute. yet. But... Wait a minute, I did not put two and two together. Do the new sounds work on the Mac app? Yes, they do. <sighs> okay. And oh, I that's was, just what blasted my ear off. <laughs> and and I and I was going to cut this out, but um, no, we'll just leave it in because turns out you know you that's that is some news that we need to talk about. Mona for Mastodon on Mac does have or on iOS and Mac has sounds now, so that's that's pretty neat. Um, it's very similar to Ivory, and they even have more sounds. You could configure your own sound. So unlike Ivory. Uh, well, I I don't think you can configure the sounds what each one does on Ivory, but on Mona you can. What I think was really interesting about this is, first of all, uh, full transparency, I was not excited about this because 99% of the time my phone's in vibrate mode, so sounds ain't going to do anything for me. Mm-hmm. However, now that I know that they're on the Mac, I have a regained interest in it. But what's really cool about this is uh, the developer of Mona actually worked with uh, blind musicians to put the sounds together to be able to uh, have a unique sound. I think that's pretty cool. I did not know that. Mm, that's yes, nice. they did. Wow, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Honestly, that was super cool. All the more reason to support Mona. Yes. Just saying, guys. I have both. And I, and I enjoy, you know, both apps. I like Ivory for the simplicity, but the. Uh, um, I enjoy Mona for the complexity and the customization. You know, I, I use Mona more on the Mac as a, it's almost like Tweet Deck for me. It's really good on the Mac. Mm-hmm. And I use, I mean, I use them both on the phone, really. But Like from a voiceover perspective, it's super accessible. It's just a really nicely done app. Mm-hmm. Probably and one of the best apps ever these days. Yeah. And you can use Windows in the Mac reliably with the app. So if you have a hashtag you want to follow, you can actually keep that hashtag up and then use your window chooser to switch between that hashtag and your main timeline. Or if you want to keep your mentions always up and switch between those with window chooser or com- command grave accent. Nice. So Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> um, so what, what happened was there, the creator of Apollo, one of the Reddit apps for uh, iOS, had a call with Reddit, and they said that to keep, if they moved to their pricing structure for the API, that it would cost him $20 million a year. Yikes. And it seems like uh, to to just keep that app using Reddit, and it seems like Reddit is going to start charging for API use for third-party applications. Now, I personally don't really use Reddit. Uh, I've just never cared for their web page, and, and every time I find information that I might be interested in, it always is like, read more. And then, like, it shows so many other, like... You may also be interested in posts. It's like, well, I'm just looking for what I'm trying to find. And so I just don't really use it much anymore. But I know a lot of people do. And I think this will be, you know, I know, I know a lot of people use the app that's in test flight uh, dystopia. So I think that this will really be kind of a blow to the accessibility community that use uh, Reddit. I just recently got into Reddit and I'm kind of bummed about it. I, I, I do like it. It's a, it's a wealth of information. Um, the Reddit app is 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 kind of like unlabeled button central, but if you can get around that and figure out what they're all for and label them accordingly, or just find a different client, um, yeah, I'm. Hmm. But there may I wanted be to like it though, but I don't love it. You know, the experience is, is is okay, but it's just I it's it's great for researching opinions or just what other people's experiences are and getting stuff out there. I love dystopia. I was sad to see this come, uh -huh. but I'm also very confused. And and maybe Michael, you can help explain this. If I have as an end user want to go from paying four dollars a month to twenty dollars a month, and and we'll go to that drastic extreme. If I want to go from paying four dollars a month to twenty dollars a month to use, I almost said ivory, but to use Apollo with Reddit, because that's what it's going to cost in order for the app developer to do it, would it not make sense to be able to still offer that if the users want to, to do that? Because I interpreted that he's going to, if this is how this goes down, he's going to, the author's going to stop developing for Apollo. Yeah, well, here's the thing is, does he have the user count to do this, right? Would he have the number of users to uh, that would be willing to pay to keep the API usage up. And then, you know, you're looking at the $100 a year for the the account on Apple mm -hmm. and, and all of those things. And we're not even talking about apps on Android and, and other places. So as a developer, do you have to prepay for API calls or do you just pay as they're used? Because to me, it doesn't make sense. Does he have the user count? Because he's not paying for something if the users aren't using the API calls. It depends. I think there's. I think you could typically get cheaper API. Um, ah, if you, know, you prepay if you, for them. Okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. That it's does like make with, more sense. Yeah. So it just depends on the method of 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 charging and payment. So, um, it, it kind of goes back to web hosting. If you pay like DreamHost for a a dedicated server for three years, you get it a lot cheaper than if you do month to month. So and let's see what really happens with this because. I mean, there's still apps out there on Twitter that theoretically should be gone and not working and they're still working and there's no explanation to that. Like some automatic posters are still working. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yep. I can't and mention names because of proprietary things, but I can tell you that there's some automated things that are mm -hmm. still working and the, the, I guarantee the people are not paying for those automated tools to be posting. Well, didn't WordPress and Jetpack even say that they would be shutting theirs down because of that? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if they'd be shutting it down, but they said they'd be charging $10 a month for Jetpack Social over 30 posts, or 30 shares, sorry. So I don't know if they're shutting it down. Uh, Maybe they are. Maybe. Hmm. Yeah. So it, it's, we're coming to a time where social media is not the free and open place that it was if you don't want to use their official apps, unless you're using Mastodon. I think, though, that uh, we're, we, it'll still be seen for Blue Sky because that's still supposed to be, you know, federated like Mastodon is and ActivityPub. I don't understand why they just don't build Blue Sky into ActivityPub. That just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, but it is what it is. But I, I'm just disappointed to see Reddit kind of go the same way as Twitter 
in yeah. in doing this. Now, on the cited, would the cited community have um, objections? Because Reddit, that's a pretty vocal um, customer base there, you know? Um, well, this affects us more because the Reddit app is, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, folks, I haven't really used it, but the Reddit app does have its accessibility right. issues. Exactly, yeah. And I think Apollo... Yeah, it does. It, it's, it's like unlabeled buttons, and it's just mm-hmm. kind of nice, kind of janky. It is. I think Apollo works better. At least on iOS. Think, yeah. But I think Dystopia was the best, and Apollo was really, you know, kind of the next step up. Yep. So, like, most sighted people really won't, won't, won't notice because of the, you know, they'll just use the Reddit app. They don't need anything else. Because I know, like, even sighted folks liked using um, Twitter clients, Mm -hmm. different ones, right? They didn't, a lot of people didn't use the main Twitter app. They Mm -hmm. liked their certain clients for whatever reason. No, because it's it's limited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So they liked that flexibility of being able to. That's what's really sad. You really lose that flexibility. Um, You know, you lose some of the creative things that people do. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, the interesting thing is, is that the Twitter app is not created equally. So Twitter for Mac is not nearly as feature rich as, as the one on the iPhone. Hmm. I always felt like that was kind of an afterthought, like, well, we have to make a Mac client. So here you go. You know, and it, it never really got any better over time mm-hmm. on the Mac. It's like, here's your, here's your Twitter client. Shut up and go away. You know? Well, I Ooh, think here's the thing. That is, should be though. the title. <laughs> <laughs> Here, the, the thing is that on windows and Android, it's still not even better. Like no, where there would be more users. It's, it's just, it's just the iOS client for Twitter that has all the features. Mm-hmm. That's true. And that's not even the iPad version. It's just for iPhone. And I still use Twitter. I have to. It's just, yeah, I have to use it because, unfortunately, the accountants have not got the memo to move to Mastodon. But, of course, if I didn't have to use the janky iOS app, I wouldn't because it's pretty pretty terrible. I mean, it's workable, but you don't want to spend a lot of time It's a mess. It's, like, really cluttered and just busy. It is. It's a very busy app. And I don't even think the web... I mean, the website may have some of the same features, but, like... Oh, God. Oh, God. Don't get me started. But for Twitter Blue, like all the features that you get on the iOS app are not there on other platforms. So it's it's interesting that Reddit is going the same direction. So I'm I'm I've wanted to share that with everybody. Um, but yeah, some late developing news though that's pretty exciting is Mac users may get to play better Windows games. And that's with Crossover 23 later this year. They're talking about uh, DirectX 12 support coming to uh, Mac gaming, which is very exciting. And there's talk that there there might be a big um, push for that at WWDC. So gaming, I think, might be a very big push for Apple this year. And we'll talk about that more later on in our uh, predictions section. But... (coughs) The, the, you know, what are y'all's thoughts on this? Y'all, I mean, I know that it's more of a visual aspect here, but any thoughts? I think it's any instance of, of opening. Oh, Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. It's more That's of a okay. visual thing, but, you know, those graphics technologies could also help with like screen readers and things, probably, right? Because if you have better graphics cards and things, that could maybe help uh, crossover and things be a good way to run screen readers. I don't know. That's just something I've been thinking about. Because we always think about, oh, we need good graphics cards for the blind. Why? Because of the screen readers, right? The screen readers do better with better graphics. I actually found that to be the case. A lot of people just used uh, stock onboard, you know, Intel stuff. But um, when I, when I, and this is like back, you know, years ago, but when I used to use um, NVIDIA cards, I found that JAWS was more, was more responsive or better, like using the JAWS cursor. Um yeah. Helped, the, the, but yeah, but I feel like any anything that opens the Mac up or or, or gives us you know inclusivity is is definitely a sure. huge thing, and that, that's yep. important. So yeah, I, I, I mean, that. I'll I'll not be able to play them, but I'll 
enjoy it hearing about it from Michael. That's for sure. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. <laughs> you may not be able to use a screen reader uh, with crossover, but it does open the doors for if you get more people interested in the Mac, if you could get more people to convert to the Mac hardware, then you get more people interested to say, hey, we need to do more with this, right? So the more opportunities we have to get the world interested in the Mac is just that one more step towards getting better developers to pay attention. And, you know, one thing that I find very interesting that I want to find out is will the Mac book air like the M2 not the Pro or Max, but will those be able to run DirectX 12 games? That would be kind yeah, of that'll cool. be interesting. Yeah, that would be awesome. I'm hoping yeah. that everybody will be able to, you know, play equally in this in this new uh, sandbox as I were, mm-hmm. and there's not going to be any compatibility issues because that would just, you know, really big news, really huge thing, right? So mm-hmm. hopefully that doesn't suck for certain people who don't have the mm-hmm. latest and greatest. Well, I mean, that's how, it is on, stuff. that's how it is on Windows. Like, if you want to play the good games, you have to have the NVIDIA card. You have right? to. Right. I mean, some of, the, some of the built-in graphics really do work, but not all the time. Nope. Right. So the last news topic I want to talk about this time is something that's very close to, to me. And full disclosure... Uh, We're talking about way around and disclosure here. I am on the way around development team, but I feel like not many podcasts have really just sat down and talked about way around. And I wanted to do that for a few minutes. So way around 4.3 has been released. We've been working on that for the last couple of months and it has some neat features and bug fixes for Android and, and, uh, features for iOS, like the um, if you're at a public location, you can share a way tag uh, that you find with yourself or others, so you can, you know, save it and, and keep track of that. But and there's some other uh, neat features like new languages. There's Portuguese, and and we also have support for Spanish and French, and of course English. But you know, we've really never talked about way around much, and I I think that it's an under uh, discussed topic in the AT space. And I want to just really, you know, Michael, I know you use way around Taylor, you use way around and I develop for it. And, uh, Lynn, do you, and Angie, do you guys use way around? No, but I have heard of it, but you're right. It doesn't get a lot of um, press. It doesn't get a lot of exposure you know, in the accessibility podcasting community, which is really a shame because it's definitely a great, you know, it's another tool in the toolbox that could really help, you know, a lot of us. I haven't used it either, but this, this is very intriguing. Mm-hmm. So Way Around, if, if people are not aware, Way Around is a tool for iPhone and Android that lets you label items around your house or office in, in fact, we call it kind of our home and office product um, for individuals to go out and pretty much put NFC, near field communications tags on anything. And they sell them at wayaround.com in uh, stickers, two types of stickers. There's uh, sewable buttons that you can, you know, sew onto clothing and pretty much anything. There is oval hole buttons that you could use safety pins with or, you know, just put with whatever you want, rubber bands, all kinds of things. There is also clips that you could clip onto things and, and like, uh, the, very useful there. And then there's magnets. Like, I even have a way tag uh, that's a magnet on uh, my refrigerator, which, you know, it would be funny if the refrigerator was a Maytag because way tag, Maytag, you know. <laughs> So I, I really, funny. yes, I had to make that <laughs> pun, but I, I really think, you know, we, we have way tags on our cabinet. So like one use I have for it is I have what I have in that cabinet on that tag. So I have my personal account and I could just scan and say, okay, this is where regular dishes and bowls are. If I just don't use a certain cabinet for a long period of time, I have an inventory of that cabinet in my kitchen. 
And, you know, you could do that with the stickers and just put them on wherever you want on your cabinets. And then you could do, like, stuff in your pantry. Put Label each shelf, right? So everything goes where it's supposed to go. You can label medications. Like, put it on the medication lid. Things like that. So is, is it... it, is it uh, I'm thinking of the pen friend. Is that, like, sort of... Oh, yes. It's very similar to the pin friend. Uh-huh. The difference is, is that you don't record your labels. You just, you, we always tell people, if you can send a text message, you can label a way tag. Okay. Yeah, I would actually prefer to type it in or Same. Dictate, I'd rather it in, dictate it into Siri <laughs> than to have my voice, mm-hmm. you know, Apple Jacks, yeah. <laughs> Captain Crunch. Like, yeah, people really want to hear me, you know, talking to myself, so. I don't want to hear me. So there you go. That's that's convenient right there. <laughs> well, and, and, you know, say you get like those big bins that you just pour your cereal into. Uh-huh. Then you can reuse the stickers. You don't have to get new tags each time. So I use them to put on Tupperware lids for leftovers. And I, what awesome. I do is I put mm-hmm. what the what is in there so I don't have to open it and smell it. And then I put the date that I put that in there. And we do not have a dishwasher. So I'm not saying that the way stickers are dishwasher safe. But I am saying that the way stickers that I've used on the Tupperware container since I think February is when we started doing it are still stuck to the lids after I wash them. And I do wash my lids, so. That is freaking impressive. I like wow. So that's pretty incredible stuff right there. And it's all NFC, so it's a little radio antenna that you know you get your phone close to it, and it just scans and it does a you know really good job. So there's so many ways of using way around. And then you know if if you've been to any of the blindness conventions lately, like uh, NFB and some of the uh, different ACB conferences, Mm -hmm. we've had way around at those and. It's just a great way to navigate because we put up these signs that are NFC signs. And you just put your, if you feel it with your hand to know that you're at this location, you can use, you know, your phone to figure out where you are, what's around you and how to get from point A to point B. It's not a navigation tool. It won't help you navigate to that next place, but it will tell you instructions on how you can do that. So it lets you be independent while giving you the information that you need. And that's what's really wonderful about it. And I you know, wonder I, if there are just, so, you know, a lot of different systems out there. It would be nice if someone could do a podcast sort of comparing the, the different systems, the pros and cons of each, mm-hmm. and sort of showcasing um, what's, what's available that people might not be aware, you know? Well, we may do that here. So, um, I haven't heard it myself, but I have heard from some customers that had the actually did a podcast reviewing the pin friend and the way around. And, uh, I think another device too. So it might be worth looking at Hadley's podcast too. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that would be very good to listen to. And, you know, I, I don't just say all this and, and we didn't bring this up because I work for way around at all. Right. But I feel like it's just something that we don't really talk about as a community much. And I, I wanted that to get out there. Like, why is Way Around so important in the AT space? And, it, and it's because it really does help out folks. Yeah. And what kind of marketing budget does it have? Because I think it, so many times in the, in the tech community, in the, in the um, blindness field especially, if you have a lot of marketing behind something, it tends to get more attention. Mm-hmm. So well, and, 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 and that's really where any, any product you, you know, you talk about, like whether you put an app in the app store, if you put, uh, you know, you go to sell something at a market, it's just, mm-hmm. do you, is it word of mouth and all those things? Right. And, and, you know, way around does, does have marketing and those kind of things, but a lot of it has been word of mouth over the years. Just, you know, all of our users just say, this is a great product. And, you know, I've heard Jonathan Moson on his podcast just kind of say he uses way around and, you know, that's a very big, um, Jonathan's very well known in the industry. So it's very helpful. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just that, Oh yeah, I use way around is what's way around. I need to go look into that. Mm-hmm. You know, word of mouth is a very good marketing tool. Of course, you know, like, like I said, way around has, quite a few marketing channels. I think like um, when we look at something like Ira and, and others who have paid a lot into their marketing, um, you know, it, 
I don't know if it's apples to apples, but it's one of those things that every company is improving, scaling, and doing new things. And I think Way Around is is doing that, and uh, I'm I'm very happy to be a part of it. But I'm, you know, we'll talk about new versions and 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 keep the conversation going. But I think that Way Around is is such a interesting tool because people only can way around's limit is only based on people's imaginations so Mm -hmm. if you can imagine using it for something you know just even think about like putting it on an inaccessible greeting card putting a sticker and then putting all the information or something special on that sticker you know there are so many different things that are possible with this app and with these tags. So if you haven't, I would, I would check it out. Spread the word. Hashtag tag everything. (laughs) (laughs) So we're going to move on from that to our, what everybody's been waiting for. And that's to talk about the big announcement coming Monday. We've had Google I.O., we've had Microsoft Build, and we've had all of these things come come by, right? And they were great. I mean, we've got the Pixel tablet, which, eh, not a big fan of. We got Windows Copilot. We got all the Microsoft things, which are kind of interesting, right? Mm -hmm. But Apple is kind of where everybody is just, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? What are they going to do? And everybody is anxious. You know, interestingly, because it is so forecasted that Apple's going to release a VR glasses hardware device thing this this year, Facebook just quietly announced the MetaQuest 3 headset. Funny as it is, the Quest Pro still has better optics. And this is newer. So I, I, I think Meta is struggling and they don't want to get left behind. So let's talk about Apple, WWDC. It's, it's going to happen for the next five days starting Monday. And the, I guess I would like to go through and, and see uh, starting with Michael, what what are you hoping for? Like, what would make you happy? I am hoping that the dog doesn't bark, so I'm warning you, but he probably will. <laughs> but I am hoping, though, that everyone is wrong and they're not releasing the glasses and Reality OS is a new version of Siri. Oh. That's what I'm hoping. Probably won't happen, but that would be awesome. And I left Michael speechless. <laughs> I, I was muted for just a second, but no. <laughs> the you know the the issue though is that we we do know it's confirmed. We've seen screenshots that show XROS. Ah, ah, okay, okay. Well, then my hopes are dashed. Come on, do something with Siri. Though. I will, Apple. I will pay you five dollars a month if you can actually make Siri be productive i know <laughs> siri has so much potential that has not been tapped and it's just Short, uh, well shortcuts help with that and i i hope we get to see some expanded uh capabilities within the operating system with shortcuts come in mm-hmm. uh this next year and i also i don't think we'll see it everywhere but i'd like to see some sort of side loading capabilities as well yep that's rumored that's rumored, but I think they said that the side loading is going to start in Europe. That's what's being said, but we don't know. Like yeah. the rumors, because the rumor websites say all these things, but we just don't no. know. I, I want side, be- lo- side loading capabilities. I want voiceover bugs mm-hmm. to be fixed. That crashy, crashy thing where voiceover goes silent just That's, happened to me just now. There's I want braille, that to be fixed. Yeah, there's the also braille a issues. braille bug that I hope will be fixed. And so Apple has had intermittent braille bugs since the days of yours. So I really, really wish they would fix it. Just fix it. I just want bug fixes. Right. You know what? And I want Siri to be smarter. Like harness all the AI goodness and and fix Siri. 
make it better. All the new stuff that is coming out and it's exciting and everything. But sometimes as a user, you stop and say, gosh, I just wish they would fix things that are broken and have been broken for a while. And let's just get these things fixed, you know. I still want to then I'll get out my credit card and buy something <laughs> new. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'll be honest. If they come out with that headset, it, I don't care it, if it's three thousand. It's gonna be in Michael's hot little hands. So. Yes, if it's if mine it's, too, y'all. So, uh huh. If it's three thousand dollars, I will buy it. I me I just, too. I will buy it the first because day it's available. We we had this question, and even on well, I think the iacast, I think the iacast hadn't even started at this point, but. A lot of blind people ask, would the Apple Watch be accessible? Of course, it would be. I, I never had any doubts. I did, because I didn't know how they would make a watch accessible. I mean, I knew we had talking clocks and uh, talking watches. Well, and we, had like the, we had the Siri remote for the Apple TV, and I, I, just, I just figured it would be. Or remember, it, what, they had the um, stripped-down version of VoiceOver on the, even on the, um, the Shuffle, or not the Shuffle, but the iPod. Nano, the iPod Nano is back in the day. So well, I figured they'd true. figure out a way to make it happen. That's true. And that's yeah. a small space, a small screen. Mm-hmm. So I just thought, yeah, they'll, they'll do it. Yeah. So that's very interesting. I, I didn't even think about that. But Watch OS 10 is coming. Yes. Uh-huh. Watch OS 10 <laughs> is yes, coming. Yes. And, and it's widgets. supposed to, yeah, we're supposed to get widgets widget and all based. these things, which is kind of like how it was originally. Mm hmm. Kind of, I'm kind of curious about that. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very curious what we're going to get. And I think that this year will also be a big year for the iPad. I hope. It's yeah. time. Mm-hmm. Well, the, the iPad did not get the new lock screen goodness that the iPhone got last year. Nope. And, and you know, the, that happens. Like, there was a year that the iPhone got a big change, and the iPad didn't get it until, I think it was widgets. Mm-hmm. And, it was a year and, later. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's going to happen on iPad this year. And I, How do I, you guys find configuring your lock screens as as a totally blind user? I don't do it. Is, is it still? <laughs> I, I, I did, honest, I don't and do it I, I can't tell you how I did it. It's it's not intuitive at all, but I, I managed to do it. And I just wish it was it was better. I hope I'm hoping that improves too. Customized lock screens to me though makes a lot more sense on the iPad because then that could be a a a product that businesses use. And provide information right there on the lock screen. Right there, and right. Businesses exactly. are already using iPads in mm-hmm. their workflows too. So. Well, you know, mm-hmm. the, the original iPad had a quick information for- right right there without having to unlock it and mm-hmm. go find the app. And yeah, the iPad had That's a true. neat feature, which was a picture frame when it first came out, and they removed that. And I was very disappointed that they did. Uh, but I think if they were it's to a put- Pixel tablet. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Pixel put that back in and that's one feature I actually do like on the Pixel tablet Mm -hmm. Uh, but it can be a photo frame mm -hmm. so I'm really hoping the iPads get some love this year and then I think the Mac I think the Mac is going to get a lot of attention this year I just something tells me we're going to see a lot of attention this year because of Rumors about gaming and things like that. They've had big game developers spotted at Apple campus. And while the person was there, the Steve Jobs theater was off limits. So it looks Uh like they've been doing filming. So I'm really hoping that we're going to see some gaming news. I think the Mac will be, you know, the Mac would be an awesome gaming machine if they're just doing. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's, Getting the third-party developers to come to the Mac. Right. It's going to be the... And I think it'll be very interesting to see how Apple makes the Mac work with the... If they do have a new headset, right? Yeah. How will they work? Because I think that we're going to see a combination of virtual reality and augmented reality with this headset. I think it will do both. We will see. I mean... Curious, right? Curious, sir. Yeah. Apple has Apple Arcade. I mean, it's a huge library, and they've gotten some pretty big titles in there. And so I'm kind of curious. You know, there was just an announcement, too, that No Man's Sky just came to the Mac, which is a, a AAA video game. So I'm 
kind of wondering, I thought there was one more that just came to the Mac as well, and I don't remember which one. But with the Crossover 23 news and all of these things, the Mac is going to become a bit more of a platform. And it, it kind of comes back to what I've been talking about for a while, that it seems like a, a lot more activity is happening on the Mac. And, and Michael, you can chime in on this one because I'm curious your thoughts. I've been saying for a while, it feels like more native apps are being developed for Mac, like Mac GPT, uh, Vivid for changing the light level, uh, Mac Whisper. We have... Uh, Centered Head. Mm-hmm, Centered Head. But isn't there an equivalent program on Windows? There's an equivalent, but it's not the like it's not a cross-platform mm-hmm. app. It's not the same developer. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like Ico, A-I-K-O is another oh, one. That was going to be my pick for today. <laughs> Well, it still can be. Um, yep, it still can be. Uh, like sound source, audio hijack. There's there's always been mm-hmm. those those tools that have been just for the Mac for sure, too. Well, we drafts have, is mm-hmm. also on yeah, the Mac. Drafts. Which is awesome because I use drafts all the time and seamless, you know, the way it works together with the phone is like amazing. No. There's just hardly any good apps on Windows anymore. Like what it's I just all say- web. What I will say has made a huge difference, and I, I just seen this app because I've been playing with it lately, uh, need to play with it a lot more. Uh, and I, on a whim, said, huh, can I do this? And I went and downloaded the Revision Fitness app on the App Store onto the Mac. I also downloaded, um, what's the name of this called? Prologue, which is a audiobooks app that you connect to your Plex server. So the fact that is I can go and not every app, but a lot of these apps, I can just walk, go to the app store and be like, Hey, let's download this to the Mac and use it. Mm-hmm. Overcast, Castro. Mm-hmm. I have both of those on the Mac too. Accessible. Not, very accessible. And not yep. to mention the uh, authentic yep. audible app is now, you know? Oh yeah. Test flight. I yeah. have test flight on the Mac so I can demo or beta test apps and mm-hmm. uh, envision AI is on the Mac now. Oh, oh really? I didn't know that. No, it's on the iPhone, but it's downloadable on the Mac. Like, Catalyst and you can like it's there's not a native app, but it is downloadable Seriously? on the Mac. And, yeah, and you can send yeah. images into Envision AI on the Mac. No, well, way. I'm gonna have to try this. No way, because I've got a yeah. 400 page yeah, book I've had in it on my Mac for like six it. months now. Like what? I just assumed everyone knew that. No, no. nobody did no. apparently. I did. Well, yeah, it works. Tell nice. us. <laughs> it, it's actually it's actually better. I I, I like scanning mail that way because it's just a lot. More I convenient did not know this. Just have, Me you know I mean, either. Michael, like it's. Than, than, and then, than messing with your phone and all that stuff. It's just easier I mean, on the Mac. It is the and iPhone I, version, but uh, yeah. it, it is the iPhone version, which is okay. I mean, as long yeah. as it works. It's okay. fine. As long, yeah, as long as it works. And so well, those on video who don't know, so. I'm using an iPhone 12 right now in a uh, stand as my camera using Camo, C-A-M-O. And uh, right now it's in a ring light stand, so I can just slide my finger across the bottom to adjust the light on my camera if I need to. But you have these other camera holders that you can actually manipulate where the phone is being held. So right there, you can go on Amazon, get a $20 or less little selfie stick that you can adjust the end, and there's your scanner. Like, you mm-hmm. just hold your phone above it that's and then right. use something like envision to scan your mail quickly that's it should have told me this about a week or two ago you get, a, get like a monopod like, like a short monopod and right you're yep. right right the recent update to um ai envision ai is or seeing ai i should say um is i just think it really makes the app a lot better like i noticed it's picking up barcodes better um it's much faster, much it's, more accurate. It, yeah, yeah, it really is. Um, I remember just because there was a point it when up. it was it was pretty raunchy. It was just slow and, and yeah, and, clunky and I and opened it up and bad. it was like it started reading my box that I was holding. Like I didn't yeah. have to mess with things and yeah. So that I mean, it was really I was really impressed. So I do wish seeing AI was available on the Mac. It is not. Me too. I just looked. I just checked. It's yeah. not on the Mac. <laughs> it's no. not. <laughs> no, it's not. Gosh, dang it! I was going to ask that just, question. Just envision. Um, and you broke oh, my dream. Sorry, Michael. I was getting confused. You guys were talking about envision. <laughs> yeah, you broke. Thanks, guys. You guys made me. Mm, thanks. Well, but I think envision in ways does some things <laughs> better. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So the, it, and I think envision actually uses. I I could be wrong. I think it uses a lot of the Azure services that Seeing AI uses. So. Very comparable product. So now that would be interesting if you could configure the glasses with the Mac app. That would be cool. 
Uh-huh. Yeah. That yeah, I'm just I'm really interested to see what kinds of applications that blind folks will be able to use with this new headset. Like I'm um, part of me is like, well, this is not something I need to be interested in because I'm totally blind, but you know, it does have applications. What I'd like to see is using it with GPS stuff. Yeah, that well, and 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 like just all sorts of scanning and and um well, yeah. if you think about it the the new headset will probably have if they do this lidar so it'll work with door Small detection mm-hmm. it'll yep. do door detection it will do people detection i will be very happy about that it'll do it would just be nice to be able to do that all hands free and not have to worry about where you have yes. your phone position exactly carrying your I phone agree. having your phone out you know mm-hmm. like cuz i still can't find a a, a viable chest uh, mount that i like for my phone so I can, because, you know, we, we always have one of our hands tied up either with a guide dog or a yep. 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 So, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's that's a big deal. Taylor Having has glasses one. that just do that would be awesome. Taylor, you found one that, that you like, right? Yeah, well, thanks to the podcast that uh, you guys did with Debbie Hazleton. It was the one oh, from what? Guidelines and Gadgets. Can you send me a link? Um, Sure. Yeah. I think I can. Yeah, we can find it. We'll, we'll, cool. we'll send it to you. Cool, cool, cool. It's the okay. lanyard... From Guidelights and Gadgets, yep. Yep, 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 yep. And cool. it works pretty well. I was able to use it in the mall when I was doing some test stuff for uh, one of my contracts. Awesome. So, because, yeah. the, and tap to speak, that's going to be great on this headset. if they. And I think that's why they are adding some of those features is because they know it will work on that headset. So with tap to speak... Do you actually have to touch this thing? Because, like, if you're dealing with a touch screen interface, you're going to activate all kinds of stuff if your finger brushes it or even it comes into contact. But I'll be curious to see how it works. I can't wait to play with it. Well, the, the tap to speak, you tap like a microwave or what, or, or put your finger near a microwave, and it will make a determination based on depth and LIDAR, like what you're pointing at. So, okay. And, and, and so it is a point thing then. You mm-hmm. don't have to actually touch it. Okay. Right. You just, because most, at. a lot of newer appliances are touch screen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They aren't like the buttons, the ca- capacitive buttons. They're actually touch screens, so that can be like, oh, I just activated ten things trying to. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> it would be nice right. also if it would work with, um, you know, in conjunction with um, Ira somehow. So because I, mm-hmm. so many times when you're working with Ira, I mean, I don't have the money to use Ira right now, but except for well, the who five, does? No, three kidding. five minutes. But it, yeah, sometimes I, I like think Ira. if you have a camera that you're holding. It can be hard because your hand shakes. You, mm-hmm. I mean, everyone's hand shakes a little bit. I forget what they call that, but there's a there's a there's a photographer um, photographic name for that <laughs> in photography. But it's called you're it's, screwing up the shot. Hold still. Yeah, <laughs> it's really hard. I think sometimes to <laughs> hold Super the human. camera to I steady it in your hands. Whereas mm-hmm. a, the headset would be awesome because it's on your head. You're not. It's pointing exactly at where you want right, to. Where you want to exactly. be. Exactly. It's, yes. it's you know you could just line up that way. That would be mm-hmm. super cool. Yeah, and yeah. if they put you know good and you know Apple will put good sound in those head that headset. So. Oh my god, that was going to be so cool. So yeah, I, like can you imagine walking down like walking through a, a, a mall, and you've got like you've got your 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 stereo field right, and you've got this door is on your right. Like walk by walking through the mall, and it's announcing stuff as you. That would be freaking awesome. So it yes. does have that sound would make as, me sound as well, right? Mm-hmm. Would, yep. It should. Yep. Uh, other should. other headsets have sound. That, that would be freaking be, awesome. I was thinking that could be awesome for like VR gaming for the airport blind. travel. Yeah. Somehow yeah, like I reading was, reading signs. Envision this um, game that I would love for a developer to make because I hate insects, flying insects like bees and flies and stuff. But wouldn't it be cool if you had like a virtual reality? game where you're like fly swatter yes <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah, flying there, fly swatter i love it <laughs> there's a lot of different things that could come out with this and and oh and the possibilities are endless yeah yeah and, and that's what's really exciting and you airport know, travel <laughs> you know we're gonna know <laughs> we're gonna know <laughs> so much more on monday because some of our airports are huge i mean the, the oh, one yeah. over here is ginormous you've been to the vegas airport before yeah, yeah oh yeah it's huge yep. huge it is but i i'm convoluted really, confusing huge i'm really excited to figure out what we're gonna get and yeah. i'm really 
I mean, just imagine also. Here's here's another one. We we did a little, a few of these on unmute, but how will this transform photography for the blind folks? Yes, mm-hmm. I was. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought about that too, because that that's Michael. You you and I have talked about that quite a bit. Quite a bit. Um, my love of photography and, and videography. So yeah, and that appeals to me much, hugely. Now, could you imagine too if it has a uh, a port where you could plug in the Ambio headset so you can record. Oh in, 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 in 360 awesome. audio 360 that would audio. be great mm-hmm. even so, if yeah. i could still use my adapter and use like yes. I, I, I can do yes. right so there's so many possibilities with this headset that, that for low vision and no vision folks to just really get excited about i mean that's leaving that's... leaving alone the gaming possibilities for modern games for for people that are who have sight or low vision I'm I'm very excited about the possibilities of this, and I I I know that it keeps. At first, I was very hesitant. Like, okay, I don't know that Apple needs to do a headset yet. But if Apple's ready to do a headset, and all indications they are, they're going to do it well, or at least better than the others. Because right? it seems to have had a little bit of a rocky start, from what I've read. Um, well, any headset right now has a rocky start because right. the technology to make it to where uh, to Apple standards is just not going to be there. But let's look back at the original Apple Watch. I mean, oh my god, that thing Ooh. was rough. Yes, it was. It but was. we got it. Those mm-hmm. of us who 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 were you know zero Apple Watch zero adopters. Mm-hmm. We thought we were just all that. We're like, yeah. oh yeah, I can track all my stuff now. Screw yes. you, Fitbit. I can see my I can see my fitness stats. And that yeah, was me. Yeah. yeah, that was and, me too. And then then I ran my Apple Watch into a few walls, and then the screen <gasps> fell off on my head. So you know, that was hilarious. <laughs> that really did happen. I was at a hotel. Really happened, Michael? Orlando. I was, that I was happened at a, the night before I met you. It was, oh my god! I was at a was hotel. It, no, or was it? Was it then? No, it was at a. I was in Corpus conference. Christi. I was in Corpus oh, Christi at a okay. conference, and I was <laughs> laying down on the bed. I had just gotten to the hotel, and the, I was doing laundry and scrambling, getting stuff ready the night before. And I ran into a wall, and I could just tell that something didn't feel right on the watch. And so, I got into the hotel, and I was laying down, looking at the watch, had it upside down, kind of, and all of a sudden, the screen just landed on my head. Wow! Like right on my forehead. <laughs> So we've come a yeah we've come a long way. The, the wires were still attached and everything. I just put the screen back on. It was fine until it fell off again. Um, so here's the WWDC and screens yes. that don't fall off. Yes. <laughs> but unfortunately, the 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 talk is that we will not see this thing until the fall, or I would even right. guess maybe early spring. Uh-huh. Oh dang it! That's that's. Mm. But I'm going to be at the Apple Store trying it out when it when it lands. So I, you can I can tell you that. But I can tell you what they may do, and we may be in a unique position here. Is uh, and and if we can make this happen, you know, we will try. Apple has done developer transition kits <gasps> like for M1. Holy crap! So, like, it, you could apply and, and put in a reason why you would like to have one. They, then they charge you money to lease these things. Since we're all on your developer team, Michael, can we all come to your house for a week and pl- you know, have, like, <laughs> have, like, have, like camp, camp Michael headset time? <laughs> camp Michael and Taylor. Camp Michael and Taylor. Yes. And Camp Aftershocks just falling off camp my head. Camp Aftershocks. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they just <laughs> fell off my head. Yeah. No, this is just... Uh. Right. So it'll it's it's very interesting. Your head's, your head's just too small. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. See, I can't wear aftershocks. They don't fit me. Like my head is genuinely too big because they can't be resized. I I cannot no. wear aftershocks. They aren't adjustable at all. They yeah. are not. And I so, have this weird thing with hair, and they slide out. Everything that I put on, like the back of my head, just slides right off because my hair is really silky. Mm-hmm. I was just like, I'm wearing these for the podcast, but my AirPods Max needs to go get in the Apple Store again. So. Yeah, her AirPods Max. They. Well, well, we'll talk about that off the podcast, but uh, okay. it, it was not good. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, anyway, the, the the headset is going to be very interesting. And I, I think that everything that Apple comes out 
this year is going to be based on that headset. And even some of the, the hints they've given to developers say code new worlds. What, what do you think that means? I mean, it, it just says headset, you know. Gaming and, and new, new, new horizons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. VR, right. Which is funny because there to are... To boldly the, go where no other headset's gone before. Right. <laughs> the funny thing is I think Meta does have an app called Horizon. Um, on, yeah, so I think that's kind of funny that, that you use that term specifically. So um, I, I think that's going to do it for this episode. Do you guys have any final thoughts before we wrap up? Is there anything that I missed that you would like? I mean, watch OS, oh, yes. and iPad. And- have you heard the thing about Siri? Apparently our little wake words getting cut down to just Siri. That's another rumor. They're that's checking a, out the hay. Oh my god! I think gosh, that's a I bad know. idea. That's a big that's mistake. A very bad idea. That is terrible, 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 terrible There are going to be really. so, many, so yeah. many false triggers. Oh, I, I mm-hmm. don't want to think about it. I completely agree with that. Yep. But yeah. again, I like Michael said, I think if we see a lot of changes for shortcuts and and just really improving mm-hmm. Siri, but I almost think what needs to happen, now, okay, this might spark a whole other discussion, so we'll, we'll see what happens. I almost think that we need to keep You just shortcuts. thought it was over, guys. Yeah. I, <laughs> False <yeah>. ending. <laughs> I, I think that shortcuts need to stay. I love shortcuts. But Me too. I think that Siri needs to go. I agree. Because Microsoft made the decision to remove what? Cortana from, Cortana. from yeah. Windows. Yep. And, Let me pick and, what assistant I have on my phone. That right. would be great. But if, Apple, be great. but if Apple wants to have an assistant, they need to genuinely do something Redo new. Redo it. Right. Mm-hmm. Bring Siri, just take it out completely, re- overhaul it, redo yep. it. Well, it needs the make addition, a whole new thing. As far as I'm concerned, it really needs the addition of AI. It mm-hmm. really needs. Yes, it does. Mm-hmm. Um, and just call it something else. You know, right. not Siri. Just you know. Okay, so I always had a problem with Siri's. Like, I, I, I guess um, the best way I can describe it is like her her cute little vernacular things that she, that it does, or he or she, whatever voice you have. And I get so tired of it. I'm like, just answer my question. Do what I want you to do. Stop trying to be cute and funny. You're not. Okay, it's just tacky. Stop it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and in the past, I've I've be productive, been, being able to answer, you know, ask a question and get a direct answer. Now I'm getting a bunch it. of links. Working mm-hmm. on it. Oh yeah, and or it's re- still on it. Yep. I mean, that's go- not acceptable mm-hmm. anymore. Search cannot be that well, way not. now. It's just or <laughs> even if you try to search for something in the app store, a lot of times exactly. it just comes up with uh-huh. a web search. Yep. Yeah. It's just searching the web for whatever. I found right. this yeah. on the web. Have a look. Yep. Read it. Yep. It's really... Angie, the way that you said that reminded me was... of the Big Bang Theory episode where they <laughs> make fun of Siri. <laughs> mm. I haven't seen that one. Oh, my gosh. This is so funny. <laughs> I found this on the web. Here, have a look. It, it had an episode... It had an episode where Raj go, like, is dreaming. Stop being lazy. And he goes to Apple's campus, and it's actually all these people reading out all that. Oh, I think I've seen that one, haven't we? I think you That's have, hilarious. too. Yeah. That's it's awesome. I was just going to say that. Are you excited so, about, the, about the headset, Larry? <laughs> so what I think is the most frustrating about Siri right. myself, because right. I've, I've, I sent Damasi one of my HomePod minis, because I was just getting frustrated with whenever you asked yes. Siri a question on the HomePod, it would say, I can answer this for you on your phone if you ask oh. me again. No. Why do I have to ask I you again? That. I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. Yeah, I agree with yeah. you. I think it's because it wants to show you information like on a screen. But why do I have to ask you again? Yeah, right. no- Alexa right. and Google can push notifications to my lock screen to give me the mm-hmm. information. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm passionate about that. No, I, 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 no, I, I agree, I agree with, you. with you. You're absolutely right. There's so much I, and how that long- could be done with it. And it's just sort of languishing there siri has been siri was the ai or the the digital assistant before anybody else that's the sad part it was by by, by by a lot of time no it hasn't it's actually just gotten gotten any better since it came out of beta Mm -hmm. exactly it's just it still feels like actually going down a beta product right yeah it was released october of 2011 yeah i even argue with the four s or as everyone used to say when they dictate the four s and you know the interesting thing is the team that made Siri went on to Samsung and made Bixby. Bixby. Now, interestingly, everybody hated Bixby. 
but I liked it. I actually did too. I liked and it. I, I actually liked. You could do the, stuff with it that you couldn't do with Google Assistant. You get could get to you know integrated more deeply into the Samsung phones. And also, could do more. I liked the gamification of Bixby because you'd get experience points and all those, and you could use <gasps> yeah. that in the Samsung store. Oh my goodness, that's true. That's mm-hmm. true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I I think what they did with it was pretty neat. So that was cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we need to wrap this thing up, but as we typically do, we have picks. I I have several to pick from. Uh, on some days, I have a hard time finding something. But to start us off, Lynn, do you have a pick this week, and where can people find you online? I do. I have a pick, and my pick is called Ico. A I K O. And basically, it is if you know what Mac Whisper is. It is sort of the phone equivalent of Mac Whisper. Um, you should know, first of all, that this is a two gigabyte download. So you do need to make sure that you have enough space on your phone. Uh, also, it is pretty um, processor intensive. So your phone's going to get nice and toasty warm. But hand warmer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but what it does is it does on the phone transcription of audio. So for example, if you have a video on your phone, a podcast, um, a class lecture, you can have um, ICO actually transcribe that for you. And it, you can export it as text or, you know, there are several different things you can export different. It has tons of languages that it supports. Um, Again, it is, it favors quality over um, speed. So it's going to take time. You're just going to have to, my advice is sort of start it and go take a shower, right? If you're going to do something that's long, that's a long bit uh, piece of audio. So it's basically transcribing your audio. It does a beautiful job. Um, it's free. But again, it's, it, it's, you know, you need a good quality phone. You need, you know, a newer phone and you need space on your phone. But if you have those things, I would recommend you try it. It's, it's slow, but it's awesome. And um, for free, you have nothing to lose, right? <laughs> so there you go. Ico. And where can people find you online? I am at Kane Prince, C A N E P R I N T S at hotmail.com. And, you know, I want to mention one thing with ICO. Uh, it's a very neat app. Uh, the one complaint that I have is that you cannot edit text in place. So you get your transcript, right. you have to do what you want with it and send it out somewhere. That's right. Yes. Um, and the funny thing is, I've, I've seen how it transcribes text and I'm like, Huh, I've done that with my desktop app that I built with mm-hmm. Python. Uh, so I do, eventually, one of the things I would love to build my own Whisper app. I think that would be fun. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. yeah. So I've built one for Windows and Mac that I actually built before Mac Whisper came out. And it's on I GitHub. I have a, an idea for you later, Michael, and we'll talk about it. Okay. Speaking of developing things. Yeah. And and, and Whisper is a very neat framework for it sure transcription. Is. Wow. And it's free. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's open. It's, it's open source. Yep. Open source. So it's, so, I mean, really, it, I, I would say you might be better off using your Mac to do this kind of work. But if you just want to, you know, translate some, um, you know, do something on the fly and you have your phone right there and you say, you know, I really want to get a text transcript mm-hmm. of this. It's a great option. And believe it or not, this will work in windows too, but it will be slower than it is on Mac because mm-hmm. the Mac has the higher quality uh, processors and things for this kind of work. Whereas uh, windows, there are ways to make NVIDIA cards work with whisper to be just as fast as the Mac, but it is mm-hmm. a little interesting. So those are things to keep in mind with Whisper. So, Michael, how about you? What's your pick and where can people find you online? 
Uh, perfect, Michael. So my pick today is going to be something you can't buy. And I love to share that with people. At least you can't buy it at the price that uh, it should be sold at. Uh, Amazon, there's people selling it for $100 more than what you can buy it at the company for sale. And that is going to be the Ubiquity Dream Router. Now, if you're not familiar with this, this is a Ubiquity access point and uh, it also has the Unify OS installed on it as well. So it w- it'll work as your uh, Unify controller as well as it will work as an access point if you need wireless. The uh, Ubiquity Unify router also has four Ethernet ports on it, two of which are PoE. And if you don't know what PoE is, then you should research it because I didn't and I thought that it was boring. And now it's like everything needs to have PoE because that's power over the Ethernet cable. And then you can expand it or uh, not if you want to. And so if you're interested, in more information about why I have 500 feet of Ethernet cable ran throughout my house. Listen to the latest episode of Technically Working, and you can find me online. Uh, I am at Payone. Mm, let's try that again. I am on Mastodon, Payone at unmute.community. Yes, PoE is really cool stuff. We we have Google Fiber here, and I love it. We have the Eero routers, and I, I love Eero, and they... They work really well with the Google Fiber and, uh, you know, routers are, people get very opinionated over routers these days. Have have y'all noticed I love that? Eero too. I use Eero as well. Yes, they like do. Some people are like, don't buy Eero, don't buy this, don't buy that. Yeah. It's, like, it's not configurable, it's trash. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. You use, use what's best for you. Now, right. we did not have good luck with the Google Nest Wi-Fi, but yeah. Um, so... Yeah, interesting stuff. And Angie, do you want to go ahead and uh, if you have a pick and where can people find you online? You can find me at uh, Tech Enthusiast. So it's T-E-C-H, capital E-N-T-H-U-S-I-A-S-T at dragonscave.space. Master people. All right. And Taylor, what is your pick for this time and where can people find you online? All right. So my pick is I just got the MacBook Air and I love it. Yay. Um, everybody's in the podcast saying yay. yay. Um, so, yeah, I, I like it. Um, really, you know, I use it for a lot of different things. Of course, unfortunately, accounting software needs to be able to get around on the Mac because it just doesn't. So. Just come on, guys, get your act together. Um, but, you know, I like it for everything else, creative stuff especially. So you can find me online in a ton of places. I have Mastodon, so uh, Tayarnt, T-A-Y-A-R-N-D-T, at Techopolis, T-E-C-H-O-P-O-L-I-S, dot social. You can also find me on Twitter, if you're still there, at Tay, T-A-Y-A-R-N-D-T. And I'm on YouTube at Taylor Arndt. So those are all the main places you can find me. But if you really search my name, you can find me pretty much anywhere. So, Yeah, that's really the cool thing about Mastodon is it actually does show up in Google search now. Like even my social account shows up on Google if you search for my name, which is really neat. You know, you, you would think that Mastodon, you know, Google would not crawl that as well, but it does. So mm-hmm. interesting stuff. My pick is a video game that I just paid an astonishingly large amount of money for, uh, Diablo 4. And oh, nice. nice. It is made by Blizzard Entertainment. And what's interesting is for low vision users like myself, they have put a screen reader in the game. Now, that may make you think that it's completely accessible, and I really wish it was. But it does not read all parts of the screen, and it does not tell you where to go in the game. But for a low vision user, if I point at an enemy, it tells me what enemy I'm looking at. And so that really helps. If I'm going through my inventory with my controller, it tells me what I'm on, reads the information. They have a bug where I, it, it let you lets you speak speed up the speech of the screen reader, but unfortunately. It, it also speeds up the, the pitch. So they didn't think that through very well. Um, but the fact that they put that in there 
was really beneficial for me. They've never had that in, in any any of the other games. So, and this is the Chipmunks. fourth in the series. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really happy about that. Um, you know, games that add more accessibility features, even if they are, are working on getting the rest of the way there is great. So very good story. Very good. There's actually books in the Diablo video game series that you can read as well. Uh, and, you know, one thing that people forget about is there are loads of, like, if, video games have some of the best stories. Like, TV shows are great. Video games are just as good as far as storytelling. And, you know, you can watch Let's Plays of video games or watch the cutscenes on YouTube. And then you could also read the books. Like, the Halo series, you're playing from cutscene to cutscene. That's really what you're doing. You're playing just to to hear the story unless you're doing multiplayer and I'm not too into that. But the book series for Halo is very extensive. It's very long. And it goes like there's parts of the games that pick up from the books and it's like, well what happened there? Oh, you need to read the book. So I I really like that there is that back and forth between games and books. So yeah. All of that to say, check out Diablo 4, books are great, all that stuff. So, as for where people can find me online, I'm Mike Doeys on Twitter, uh, Mike Doeys at techoplus.social, that's M-I-K-E-D-O-I-S-E. You can email me at mikedoeys at icloud.com, and you can find me anywhere on the web, just search for Michael Doeys, you can find me. And, uh, yeah, this has been a great episode, uh, great episode, so I'm glad all of you guys joined me today. Um, it was fun. Thanks for yes. having us. Good to and, be here. Yeah, and we will be back on Monday uh, for an IA Cast Plus uh, exclusive. If you subscribe to that feed, you'll be able to listen to that uh, uh, coverage of the event where we all join a room and talk about the event, and then we'll do an uh, first impressions at the end of the. Uh, keynote and then on saturday after wwdc wraps up when we get all of the the details because we'll get details on all of this stuff throughout the week apple does sessions all week and they only release certain sessions each day so after all of that's done we'll come back together and do an, a wrap-up show for wwdc and talk about everything that we've learned so there's going to be a lot of great content from it's us be an ia castathon yes so yeah, we're all holding our breath. Yes. Waiting for the big moment to arrive. And mm-hmm. I hope we're not going to be disappointed. You ever you ever notice like every Apple event, you see these journalists or people on Twitter or people and it's like, oh, well, that's totally boring, you know? <laughs> so, but I don't think it's going to be that way this time. I think there's just going to be a lot of cool stuff. You know, I really have never been that disappointed from an Apple event, but I think it's because I'm an Apple fanboy. You yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. yeah, all right. That's gonna it's do Apple, it. Apple Christmas. Yes, Apple. And Christmas. then we also get to start the start the. Yeah. So thanks everybody for for being here, and we will have loads of content coming this summer. We'll talk about the betas, all of those things. So I want to thank you all for joining, and we'll see you all next time. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching, Bye, everyone, and listening, and listening. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Consuming. Thanks for consuming. <laughs> that just sounds awkward. Thanks for consuming. Thanks for consuming. I mean, uh, <laughs> Thanks for. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye. Good luck bye. editing, Michael. Oh, I'm leaving all that in. Good. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in to the IA cast. We hope you enjoyed the show and found the conversation to be insightful and informative. If you have any feedback or comments, we'd love to hear from you. Please send us an email at feedback at IACast.net. You can also follow us on Twitter at IACast Network to stay informed about new episodes and other updates. Don't forget to check out more great podcasts on the IACast Network, IACast.net. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you.